the whole purpose is that you have come through a party seat you go and face the electorate again whether with that party independent or a third party that's the whole long and short of this was malus have you lost you ever heard this happening except in some very rare cases in england or other democracies there's no concept i have come on a party i'll either resign or i'll malus just leave that and fight again for another party that was the whole purpose of this but what you are telling the court is that no i will affirmatively not resign i will not go to the ec why because i am scared that somebody will disqualify me but then what was mr ashok sir enacting in 1985 malus is enacting a power of disqualification for changing a party what is the purpose of two thirds of parliament saying so if you can simply what is the harmonization principle that you are referring yeah. to harmonization is this five a four fold malus five originally with the faction otherwise four are the flexibility play in the joints affirmative permissibility part of the 10th schedule and the 21a 21b is the negative prohibitory part you can do all these four without doing the negative part for the negative you don't have to violate violate the ne- negative part for any of these four i will say even if you go to the election commission you don't have to violate a whip you don't have to malus voluntarily give up your party you say i am on principle please decide this so in other words you are saying other than those five instances four now every four everything else is everything else falls within the net of 10 schedule and one more thing i am saying that another... 10 schedule absolutely correct and the 10 schedule has both parts it has those four it has a negative it malus creates a whole code by itself harmonization means that your lot should adopt my submission and inter- interpretation because it harmonizes the negative and the positive now for 30 seconds see if your ship does not adopt the harmonization principle the only thing a lot should have to validate is a three step procedure There's nothing else was is staring a lot should in the face the three step procedure i want to ask myself malus in which case will the 10 schedule bite let's malus be very blunt what your lordship will do is your lordship's domain but today your lordship's other option other than my option which i am submitting most humbly and respectfully is adopt the three step procedure or validate it or recognize it malus then how will tension will apply it cannot and then malus your lordship should be actually adopting an interpretation which reduces the tension schedule to vanishing point actually vanishes the vanishing point it vanishes every case of defection i will say i'll not resign i won't go to the ec i won't merge merger is given to you by the para 4 of the of the of the tension schedule i will not do it but as your lordship was told i am the party i am the overwhelming majority i am the main person i am it i am it therefore to hell with the tension schedule so much as on principles of interpretation and much more so of constitutional interpretation than even statutory this is a much better way to look at it than much as the contrary view because your lordship malus gives meaning to both sides and your lordship does not adopt something what is this other adoption which is propounded to your lordships on the high moral principle of democracy dissent free speech each of my four options gives you that option so what the ten schedule does is it says i am giving you a free speech option i am giving you a democracy option but within my own terms i am not giving you a jungle raj free speech and democracy option otherwise why would i enact a ten schedule see but merger dr singh was not an option open to them because they were not claiming to merge their party with yeah, either right. the bjp or any other party with respect but i'm sorry right. to interrupt why not so, merger was not an option no it was an option so, they did not choose course, to exercise it right you're right nah, that's correct it's an option they chose not they to exercise an option in, an, in the abstract but it's they were not option. following the merger route at all because it's not their case that look this part of the sena that's exactly my point with another party that is not that's your that's exactly my point with greatest humility the only point is that in a situation like this where they say that we have lost faith with the leader of the party yes then the only con- then the only option according to them according to you is that you resign and recontest no mas no. i will stick stick to my four options that's huh i'll say all the four options are no 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 what 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 do they do then no no whereas resign is one right these nine people with merge with another political party why not but the fact that i don't excise an option that, that is not an option because merger means that their political identity as the shiv sena is lost there that, that well then in that case if the 10 schedule says that i recognize only this path of exit of, from this room you can't say i'll make a new tunnel to get out but you know doctor so he can't make a new your argument is a problematic argument so that look problematic. i'll tell you why because your argument postulates that if you have a dissension 
then the only way you can express the dissension is to leave the party and merge somewhere else one they say sorry we don't want to leave i mean right. ideologically i am a shiv sena man i don't want to leave he says he says i don't want to leave the party so as per kindly see brother now kindly see the even if even if somebody applies to the election commission at yes. the initial stage instead yes. of in the legislative assembly Correct. and says that we now want the political party to act that we are the political act. party recognize us so even that according to your argument is impermissible then no no because so because that's outside the so long as five instances that no, you have no, given no 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 one of my five is easy he is not resigned i beg no no one is resignation one is split which is gone now one is merger The fourth is EC. Fourth is EC. Now, whereas if I apply to EC without violating a whip and get a decision, if I apply to EC without voluntarily resigning, it's perfectly permissible. I can't be saying I'll topple first and then I'll apply to EC. So remain a member, be a part of it, and and whereas vindicate vindicate your principle. Absolutely, whereas I just see the reverse of it. But just just consider how it will apply. You first topple the government. Then you go to the EC. And why did you like the ten schedule? That we understand. No, and and Malas also apropos by Lord Chief Justice Query Malas, are you harmonising or not? Malas, one more thing: the fact that you don't choose consciously not to exercise an option But does not mean you can wish away the option. The option is a constitutional option. It's a constitutional option. It's as equal to split as it was earlier. You don't exercise it. It really amounts to saying this: I want to avoid the ten schedule. So I will put blinkers and close my eyes to four options available, four constitutional options. The fifth one is deleted, and I will choose a new option, which is only the three-step procedure. First, disable the speaker. Second, approach the governor. Third, be sworn in. See, the negative prohibition on the ten schedule is twofold: one, voluntarily giving up a membership, and two, defying a whip to one A to one B. The ten schedule certainly does not. Have any provision by virtue of which there is a prescription? If you do not give voluntarily, if you do not give up the membership of the party, and yet exercise the right of working your remedies within the party, it, it it then you cannot be held to be a defector, right? And that is the whole purpose. You were elected. That's exactly the case, no? No, but because then in that case, why do you enact the ten schedule? Because ten schedule is not valid saying. Let me put this harmonisation, which is a very important principle, in another way. What is the scheme of whole this entire system? Well, if your lordship were to make a standard as broad as if you have a dissent, you can violate the ten schedule. Then your lordship will uh, unmanageable. Then, but unmanageable. your argument, Doctor Singhvi, would be yes. the extreme argument on this side, which possibly you can adopt also, is that any dissension. Amounts to the voluntarily voluntarily giving up of the membership of a party. No, I'm going to give one of the more. I, I, I'm not an extreme. The other argument is extreme. I'm going to give a harmonised answer immediately to that. The principle can never be malus dissent. I'm not happy, therefore I can go. Three answers malus. One, for everybody has dissent malus. Which political party? There are enough inbuilt outlets within the party to express dissent. One, that is what your lordship will always say. Two. the dissent within the party at the appropriate fora can be followed by any of these four three three you malus if you are having dissensions and you are not satisfied with the party system then malus you will simply express it that i am resigning or doing malus going away with nine tenths of the people but malus how will you say that mere disagreement Entitles me to topple. Here they have not expressed dissent. Well, this is not a case of dissent. I have not gone out and spoken against the party. Dissent plus. This is dissent plus plus plus. Dissent plus toppling. Your lordship remembers I started. Well, I think there was a November Abia hearing. Your lordship notices. Well, was one ninety one two and one ninety four. Your lordship may not remember that. Well, just kindly turn to that for a minute. One ninety one bracket two is an. Clear statutory, uh, the constitutional prohibition in the ten schedule saying you shall be disqualified. That's the ten schedule comes from one ninety one bracket two. Now, well, it's one ninety four, which follows two clauses later, says subject to the provisions of this constitution, there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature. And well, it's nineteen one a is even more reasonable restrictions. Now it can't be that mere saying free speech, I can violate. I I'll violate. You can act within the party constitution. 
whatever the party constitution allows some party constitutions have malus even appellate bodies some have two level things you can actually do all of it before you go by these four escape routes of merger resignation you can do all of it but ultimately if it doesn't work you have to take these four routes and 194 1 makes it clear subject to the provision of this constitution and to the rules and standing orders regulating the procedure there shall be freedom of speech in the legislature of every state this is not more as a open ended charter and when is plus see, kindly see the passage dr singhi according to you when does the governor then award uh, order a trust vote no the governor when is the governor has no role at all in such a governor first answer your lot should be when the government is formed or when the government is about to be formed that's the inception argument the governor will never come into a tenth schedule situation it's a malus what is your lot ship considering an intra party dispute at the end of the day what is this dissension i don't like you i don't like you. intra party how does it come to come to intra party dispute how does it even recognize it there are all kinds of feuds going inside parties how does my lord lay down in english language a judicially manageable standard to control the governor peeking into intra party disputes please it will be a thin end of the wedge this is nothing but political party a intra the governor will deal with some constitutional issue or something relating beyond intra party and how will the governor deal without any specific article mind you please in a sense superseding and overdoing the 10th schedule which is a constitutional article with 1912 which we tend to forget 1912 read with the 10th schedule the couple of things step 1 was uh, as we saw i mean the three the three uh, the three steps that you told us just yes, one second i'll just go have go back to it correct brother notice of removal to the speaker yes resolutions given to the governor and yes. the act of being sworn in as uh, cm correct this one step earlier probably one one step which you can also add there which was the governor's trust no, no, vote no. communication i'm grateful i'm grateful. right now four step there procedure. suppose uh, uh, you know notice of removal of the speaker we are we're not really called upon to adjudicate upon the validity of the except except in navam arabia your lordship if your lordship chooses to refer would have that issue navam arabia if it in the broad no no i'm saying it arises i'm not saying your lordship may have to for this case i'm saying that's the core issue in, no no i'm saying well it's it's a issue with governor the day. governor asked for a trust vote yes two ways of looking at it while well, the governor had material to call for a trust vote in which case a further issue would arise as to whether he was justified in calling upon shinde to form the government pin pointing picking out a person and saying picking out a person because correct even assuming that the governor had material to call for a trust vote what is the basis for picking up shinde second that the governor had no material to ask for a trust vote that there was no valid material at all that's on the basis question. of those three circumstances that's a core question and well uh, that goes to the heart of the matter if i may digress for 30 seconds mr tushar mehta was right when he quoted the couplet but perhaps didn't realize that the second sentence applies against him he quoted bashir bhadra to say chup rahe to galat fehmiyon aur galat fehmiyan aur bhi badhi usne wo bhi suna jo maine kaha nahi usne wo bhi suna jo maine kaha nahi malus the governor in his letter at 326 pdf <laughs> talks of a resolution to exit the government which doesn't exist at page 55 as the resolution is held there So he's hearing yeah, things. Joe, the, the resolution doesn't say that we are exiting the government. Yes. So he heard something. We had said, wanted to. <laughs> well, I found a more appropriate one for Mr. Mehta. I found a more appropriate phase for Mr. Mehta, brothers. Not Bashir. Bhatt. So the only question was whether there was a valid exercise of power by the governor to call for a trust vote. And if we, but what happens if we come to the conclusion that there was no valid exercise of power by the governor to call a trust? Everything falls. Everything falls is very uh, no no. Why? I'll be I'll be dealing with Bombay. Listen, that's actually that's the core question. Your lordships is saved a lot of unnecessary exercise if your lordship comes to that conclusion plus follows Bombay. 